This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Stellantis is deeply worried about the transition to electric vehicles and intense competition from Chinese automakers, so it's cutting more jobs, this time in Italy. Last week it laid off 400 engineering employees in the U.S., and now it reached deals with labor unions at several plants in Italy to slash at least 2,500 jobs. But the cuts are voluntary, with Stellantis offering buyout packages to workers close to retirement or those looking for a new opportunity. Stellantis says it will announce more agreements at other sites in Italy in the coming days, so it sounds like more layoffs are on the way. Stellantis currently employs 43,000 people in Italy, down from around 55,000 in 2021 when the automotive group was formed. Speaking of intense competition from Chinese automakers, BYD reported its 2023 financial results and the company is experiencing rocket-like growth. It sold 3 million vehicles last year, up 45% from the year before. That means it broke into the rankings of the top 10 car companies in the world, surpassing Mercedes, BMW, and Renault, and it's right on the heels of Nissan. Revenue came in at $83.3 billion, up 42%. Its gross profit margin hit 20%. It posted an operating profit of nearly $5.3 billion, which was up nearly 77%. And it made a net profit of $4.1 billion, which was up 80%. And by the way, that net profit nearly matches the $4.3 billion Ford made last year. And just to give you an idea of how vertically integrated BYD is, it has over 703,000 employees, which is more than Volkswagen or Toyota. And keep in mind that BYD doesn't just make cars. It also makes cell phones and semiconductors. But automotive accounts for 80% of the company's business, which is up from 76% the year before. There's no question that the transition to EVs is costing a boatload of money. The Hyundai Group announced it's investing $51 billion over the next three years in EVs and software-defined vehicles and will also hire 81,000 new employees. More than half of the money will be used for new R&D infrastructure and EV assembly lines, and most of the rest will go towards R&D for EVs, including software-defined vehicles and battery technology. Car sales in Europe are still running about 5 million units a year lower than they were pre-COVID. So the French auto parts supplier Plastic Omnium wants to become less reliant on the European market. It's planning more investments in the U.S. and it's also changing its name. As you can probably guess, the company specialized in plastics. But it's growing its business to include EV and hydrogen technology. So it's changing its name from Plastic Omnium to OP Mobility. It will open a new plant in Texas next month, and it's investing in one in Michigan for fuel cells. The company's CEO says it expects its U.S. revenue to double by 2028. Last year, it was 1.6 billion euros, or about 14% of its total revenue. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software-defined vehicles. Citroën revealed an all-new compact fastback SUV called the Basalt that it's going to sell in India and South America. It's built on the same platform as the C3 and C3 Aircross and features a similar design language to those vehicles. But development of the Basalt also benefited from direct involvement of teams in the regions 
and in the future, Citroen says it will produce vehicles locally. While it's not revealing what will power the model, we would expect a similar lineup as the C3, which is available with a range of gas and diesel three-cylinder engines, including hybrids, and there's even the option for pure electric. The Basalt will join the C3 and C3 Aircross in India and South America in the second half of this year. Honda engines have been dominating Formula One the last couple of seasons, which has made it a sought-after supplier. It currently has a partnership with the Red Bull teams to provide them with power units until next year, and when rules change in 2026 that will require about three times the electrical power, Honda will also start supplying power units to Aston Martin Racing. In order to support those efforts, the company's racing division is creating a new subsidiary in the UK called Honda Racing Corporation UK. Its main task will be performing post-race maintenance and preparation on F1 power units, but it will also act as a logistics operation for the European region. EV owners will save money by charging at home and having a lot less maintenance to do, like no need for oil changes and tune-ups. But some of that will be offset by spending more on replacing tires. J.D. Power's 2024 U.S. Original Equipment Tire Customer Satisfaction Study found that EV owners reported their tires wear out faster due to the weight and power of electric cars. Automotive News says this could be a good source of business for dealerships, including servicing tires. But right now, there's some variation in recommended service. Mustang Mach-E owners are told to rotate their tires every 10,000 miles. For the Hyundai Ioniq 6, it's every 8,500 miles, and for the Hummer EV, it's every 7,500. One of the most common complaints we hear are about bright headlights that blind oncoming drivers. Well, Forvia has a solution to that. It developed headlamps that use 14,000 miniature LED pixels that are really bright, but the pixels can be individually turned on or off. So when you're coming towards a car like this at night, the headlights turn off the pixels that would normally shine right in your eyes. Same thing for the car in front of you. Your brights won't show up in their rearview mirrors. Once a car goes over 25 miles an hour, the headlights automatically go into high beam. And you can practically drive with your brights on all the time without blinding anyone. This technology has been available in Europe for a number of years, and Forvia says they will probably hit the U.S. market this year but it will not identify which manufacturer will use them. These lamps can actually do a lot more than what we've shown you here, and we'll be posting a video that gets into a lot more detail. NEO is pioneering some interesting technologies on its new flagship EV, the ET9, which should be out sometime next year. We've previously reported how it could be the first by-wire vehicle, meaning the throttle, gear shift, suspension, steering, and brakes will all be controlled with electronic inputs. And now Car News China reports the ET9 will feature the world's first mass-produced 900-volt drive unit. It's a 925-volt W-pin synchronous permanent magnet motor that uses continuous wave winding technology. It weighs just 79 kilograms or about 175 pounds, but it produces up to 340 kilowatts or nearly 456 horsepower. One of these drive units will power the rear wheels, while an asynchronous induction motor with up to 180 kilowatts or 241 horsepower will drive the front wheels. NEO says the 900 volt unit is also smaller and lighter by about 30%. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires, improved acceleration in wet conditions.